In Captain Clay's return to the bay, Thompson was classily honored by Dub Nation, which was dope to see. The Warriors four-time champion and five-time All-Star dropped a game most six three-pointers, the most threes by a player in their first game against a former team since KD versus OKC almost a decade ago. However, it was Klay Thompson's splash brother getting the last laugh, as Stephen Curry's 37-point masterclass included one of the greatest players ever going on a 12-0 run single-handedly to combine with one of the greatest defenders ever in Draymond Green's clamps to reverse the Warriors' fortunes in the clutch. A full breakdown is on its way. Right quick, over 80% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. Curry hit his first shot in Thompson's face before pointing at Clay. The third member of the all-time greatest Big Three also hit his first three in Clay's face. Curry neutralized this Thompson post-up attempt by stripping him clean. Draymond Green would set the tone by swatting this attempted triple and saving it from going out of bounds to trigger a fast break hoop by Melton. Directly after Jason Kidd called timeout from that play, Green would knock down a spot-up deep ranger from the left corner. Later in the quarter, Clay would get loose on the fast break and receive the dime from Luka to drain the first field goal of his return to Chase Center. Directly after the Splash brother did that, out of a split action, the Splash buddy would answer with a beyond the arcer of his own. Only for Thompson to, in the second frame, drain consecutive distance daggers from the right corner and from the far left wing to put the Mavs up seven and force a Steve Kerr timeout. Clay would also shimmy on one of those triples, which would come back to bite him. To close out the first 24 minutes, Curry would put Thompson in foul trouble as after Steph put it on the deck and drew the contact before floating it at home for the and one, Clay picked up his third foul before entering the halftime locker room, and Curry would give his splash brother a hilarious little stare down. Skipping ahead to the final minutes where the Mavs held a 7 point lead with around 4 minutes left and Curry and Green's dominance would commence. First it was Curry clamping up Doncic and knocking it away from him which led to a melt and triple on the other end. Steph then isolated Quentin Grimes to get an open mid-ranger. On the other end, Draymond rotated onto Daniel Gafford to draw the charge. Steph using a Wiggins screen to get switched onto Doncic, then sees him use a green screen to get switched onto Gafford, and he instantly lets fly of the triple in Daniel's face. Green would follow that up by making another miraculous rotation onto Gafford, which consists of him rising up to stuff him and staring him down afterwards. Beastly stance right there. After accepting two screens on the previous possession, here it's Steph rejecting a Draymond on ball which fools Luka and Steph gets downhill, eyes melting in the corner to get Clay off him, before floating it over Grimes and getting the roll. And Steph was feeling himself after that one to take the lead. Massive shout out to Andrew Wiggins who clamped up Luka in the fourth quarter like the 2022 West Finals, and here it's Andrew forcing a miss on a Luka post fadeaway. That led to the best moment of the night where Curry again made the Mavs switch defense pay by taking on Lively the second after a green pick, hitting Derek with a saucy dribble combo to shake him just enough before letting it fly with just an inch of room and draining it. This resulted in Curry hitting the night-night celly and getting about as hyped as I've ever seen him get or any player get for that matter. A few possessions later, Wiggins would lock up Doncic to force the air ball. In the last 15 years, only twice has an NBA player gone on a 10-0 run single-handedly the last four minutes to turn a two-possession deficit into a two-possession lead, with nobody else on either team scoring in that span. One was LeBron James on April 16th, 2012, the other was Stephen Curry on Tuesday night. This was some type of clinic down the stretch. While he seemed to have been saying, you miss it here, to Clay after hitting the game clincher, it was unclear what Steph was yelling, as even Curry himself doesn't know. I'm trying to dissect what you were saying into the camera at the end after the night night. What what were you saying? I really have no idea. <laughs> I gotta look at it myself. I mean, that type of moment with all that angst, uh, it was raw emotion. I really don't know what I said. I'll let you know though. I'm gonna shy away from what I said on the court. I had to go look at it. Here was how Clay felt after what Stefan did. It was just basketball. And, and um, yeah, it hurts to be on the other side of one of his flurries. The uh, guy got hot at the end and made some ridiculous shots. And uh, I've been on the other end and it sucks. But uh, like I said before, I think we play them three more times. So hopefully we can learn from it and learn their 
tendencies a little better. But um, it sucks because this was a big game for the Cubs, so something we just got to digest and move forward. Displaying how ethical of a hooper this man Curry is, over the past two games, he shot just seven free throws, yet posted 73 points, which is the type of basketball any fan loves to watch. Steph isn't anything close to a foul baiter. He plays the game the right way, which we should all respect. Curry has the most games with 30 plus points and less than five free throws ever, as in that stat, he leads Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and LeBron James by a wide margin. We should also respect the fact that we're getting to witness not only the greatest shooter of all time, but maybe the greatest player of all time. A stat proving that is the fact that after doing what he did in Clay's return, Stefan's now the only player ever next to LeBron James and Michael Jordan with consecutive 35 plus point games at age 36 or older. Those are two of the greatest players ever. So Steph being right next to them in this department says a lot about his longevity and general all-time greatness. While Klay Thompson felt what it was like to finally be on the wrong side of a Curry flurry, a former Memphis Grizzly who's been eliminated by Steph in the playoffs in DeAnthony Melton finally felt what it was like to be on the right side of one. You've seen that core of Steph, Clay, Draymond from the other side of things where, you know, Man. how kind of odd is that for you seeing them separate and seeing them? Mm -hmm. like the second quarter where it steps in and then one and then staring down yeah yeah uh i mean i love to see it i love to see it you know those, those dudes going at it they've been on the same team for so long so seeing those two dudes go at it was fun to watch um and like you said being on the receiving end of this uh i mean after he hit that last shot i just ran straight to like i ran straight to kyle and just be like yo he's crazy like we you know we've never been on this side of the spectrum for him before so just to see it and be you know on that team where he's doing it, you know, with is special. I want to know your favorite part about Clay's return down below. Mine was when Clay shimmied, Steph shook his head from the bench, got revenge, then said post game that Thompson knows better than that. It was all in all weird to see this matchup based off how long the big three has been playing together, but it turned into some pretty damn good TV. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.